So we know that to solve a general linear differential equation, we have to solve two independent problems. We have to first find the complementary function. And this is nothing other than just simply the uh, general solution to the associated homogeneous equation here. And then we have to actually find a genuine solution, which we call a particular solution. And then from these two ingredients, we can represent the full solution to our differential equation simply as their sum. So a number of previous videos have dealt with how to solve homogeneous differential equations, and none yet how to find particular solutions. And that's really the topic of today's video. Um, so there's a technique called undetermined coefficients, which applies w well when we're dealing with a differential equation with constant coefficients, a linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So to illustrate the technique, I want to immediately just jump straight into an example. So let's try and solve this differential equation here. Okay, so we need to do two things here. First, let's find what is the, um, the complementary function. So we need to solve this differential equation here. And from this, we can associate the auxiliary equation. And from this, we get two solutions, r is equal to 1 or r is equal to negative 1. And so immediately, this tells us that e to the rx, which is e to the x in this case, and e to the negative x, are linearly independent solutions to this equation, and so our complementary function is nothing other than simply yc is equal to a general linear combination of those two. So we get this. Okay, so this is the complementary function of our differential equation. Uh, now we need to find a particular solution. Okay, so here's how the technique of undetermined coefficients go. If we have a differential equation with constant coefficients, and we end up with this function, um, it's reasonable to suggest that this function uh, has to be some kind of linear combina general linear combination of this function and its derivatives. Otherwise, how else would, would we have um, achieved this form? So the idea is to make a, an educated guess, really. So if we, we take a look at this function here and we make an educated guess, so let's try um, a general linear combination of this function and its derivatives here. So what does a general linear combination of this function and its derivatives look like? Well, let's just compute the derivatives. We have 1 minus x squared, that's the zeroth derivative. We have negative 2x, and then we have negative 2, and then 0. So if we look at what kind of different functions are appearing in, in these terms here, well, we have a constant, and then we have a linear x term, and then we have an x squared term. So that what we're going to try is yp equal to a general linear combination of those three functions that we just isolated, which in this case is just going to be a plus bx plus cx squared. So that um, uh, any linear combination of this function and its derivatives are simply going to be um, of this form here. All right, so we try this, and now we substitute it into the, the equation here. Uh, now, you can immediately see that the second derivative of this equation, uh, let me just write this out, the second derivative of yp here is going to be uh, nothing other than just 2c. And so uh, we can substitute this into the equation and get that yp double prime minus yp must equal... Um, uh, well, let's just compute exactly what it will be. It's going to be just 2c minus a minus bx minus cx squared. And we already know what this must be equal to. This must be equal to 1 minus x squared. Okay. Now, from that, um, we can equate coefficients. So, for instance, this here, being the only constant appearing in this whole expression, must be equal to the only constant appearing in this expression so that we immediately get we immediately get something um, and we immediately get that 2c minus a is equal to 1 and then uh, since uh, we have negative bx on this side but no negative no linear term here on this side uh, we must get that b is equal to 0 and then negative c must equal negative 1, and so that c is just equal to 1. 
Okay, now if, if C is equal to 1, uh, you can immediately see that substituting C into this equation gives us A is equal to 1. So immediately we can solve this to get that A is equal to 1 is equal to C. So that our particular solution YP is just nothing other than 1 plus X squared. Okay, so that's our uh, particular solution we found. And so that means that a final solution to our differential equation can just be the complementary function plus a particular solution, which in this case is just going to be c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x plus our particular solution, which in this case is just 1 plus x squared. Okay, great. So that's uh, the general solution to this differential equation up here. It's going to be just this function here. Okay, let's do the same technique on, the, um, on, a, on a bit more difficult of an example. So we're asked here to solve uh, the following initial value problem. So uh, we're given a linear differential equation with constant coefficients, which is non-homogeneous. So first things first, we need to find the complementary function. But the nice thing about this differential equation is that it's the, the, the left-hand side is the same as the previous uh, one and we already know what the complementary function is. So that's going to just be c1 e to the x plus c2 e to the negative x. All right, next thing, we have to take this function here and try to guess what does a general linear combination of this function and its derivatives look like. So if I differentiate this function, so let's, I have e to the x, two cos x minus sine x. And I know if I differentiate this function, I use product rule, so I get just differentiate e to the x and multiply it by the, this function. And then add that to the derivative of uh, the other function multiplied by e to the x, so we get e to the x times by uh, negative 2 sine x minus cos x. Okay, and here again, you can factor out the e to the x term and then combine the causes and the signs. And you're going to get a general expression. And that general expression uh, is going to look something like this. It's going to be yp is just simply equal to um, nothing other than uh, e to the x times a cos x plus b sine x. And so that's going to be our guess. We're going to choose that this is our, um, uh, our, our try. We're going to trial, use this as a trial function here. Okay, so if we try that this is our yp, um, the next thing to do here is to differentiate it as many times as we need it, which in this case is going to be two because eventually we have to substitute it into this equation. So um, differentiating it just once gives us um, just e to the x a cos x plus b sine x. And now um, I, I'm going to just immediately write in, uh, I, I, so imagine I've factored out the e to, to the x here. Um, and so I'm just going to have negative a sine x um, plus b cos x. So why, why is this genuinely the derivative? Because I'm just using the product rule. If I multiply this e to the x into this and then into this, then I have e to the x a cos x b x, which is the derivative of this times that. And then I'll also have uh, e to the x times negative a sine x plus b cos x, which is uh, the derivative of this times that. Okay, so um, the result of this is that, uh, so this was here the first derivative, and so we get that y prime here is going to be nothing other than a plus b e to the x cos x plus um, b minus a e to the x sine x. 
And again here, you can factor out the e to the x if you choose. So we have e to the x here uh, times a plus b cos x plus b minus a e to the x sin x. OK, so we have the first derivative. Um, let's quickly get the second derivative here. Um, second derivative, just going to be applying a very similar technique. Um, so we'll have an a plus b uh, and a b minus a. Um, so we should end up with just 2b e to the x cos x. Um, minus, uh, yeah, minus 2a e to the x sin x. Okay, so um, computing the derivatives of our, our, de our general trial function here, uh, we, we have enough, uh, we've computed uh, the derivative as many times as we'll need it, so we can s immediately substitute it straight back into our equation here. And we can check, so we're going to get yp double prime minus yp, which in this case will just give us, so taking uh, this function here minus this one, and what will we get? Uh, well, we're going to get 2b minus a. So we'll get 2b minus a e to the x cos x. And also we'll get negative b, negative 2a minus b sine x, e to the x sine x. OK. So this is what we get. The, conf the coefficients are undetermined. And so we uh, set this equal to the right-hand side function, which we remember now is just going to be e to the x times 2 cos x minus sine x. And OK, this here is just 2 e to the x cos x minus uh, e to the x sine x. OK, good. And um, what is this going to tell us? It's going to tell us that we have a linear system, 2b minus a. So the coefficient of the e to the x cos x must be this. So this must be 2. And likewise, negative 2a minus b should be equal to negative 1. So from this, we get 2b minus a, uh, and then 2a plus b is equal to 1, and this is equal to 2. And we can solve this system. So let's isolate the b from this side here and just get that uh, b is equal to 1 minus 2a. Let's substitute that back into this equation here and get that 2, 1 minus 2a uh, minus a equals 2. Aha, and then you'll see this equation here is going to tell us that um, negative 5a is going to tell us negative 5a is equal to 0 because the 2 here is going to cancel with this. Great, so we get negative 5a is equal to 0. So in other words, a is equal to 0. Um, and a being 0 forces b to be 1. Great. So we have uh, found all the coefficients, a and b. Uh, b is uh, 1 and a is 0. And so our particular s solution here can be represented simply yp is equal to, OK, since a is 0, it's just going to be b e to the x sine x. So in this case, we're just going to have um, e to the x sine x, because b is 1. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, this illustrates the technique of undetermined coefficients. Just to say a little bit of general what's happening, um, whenever you're given this, this function, g here, uh, the thing to do, the, the, the main part of the technique is to take a guess, really, to, to really try and uh, to try represent yp here as just a general linear combination of g and its derivatives. Try and find a way to represent a general linear combination of g and its derivatives. 
um, which is to say that any linear combination will be of that form that you try here. Uh, and then uh, this is a good solution to, to try and determine the coefficients. Okay, thank you.